Hey guys, thank you for watching Green Light Tour Entertainment. This is Jeff. This is Alan. And I also have Carson. How are you guys doing today? How was your weekend? Weekend was great, man. Uh, rest, relaxation, and uh, a lot of comic news. Yes, that's that's a lot. Uh, what, what about you, Carson? How are you doing today? How was your weekend? Um, you know, I'm stuck, I'm stuck here while you guys are in D.C., which is BS. Y'all just left me this time. Hey, hey. So I'm feeling a sort of way about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit emotional that this is happening like this, but all right, I get it. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, next time, next time. <laughs> So uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And um, I want to say we got some um, pretty interesting top topics. Not a lot this week because it was kind of slow. A lot of news, but not a lot of big news, but some stuff that we felt that was very interesting to talk about. So we're going to get right into it right now. Okay, guys. So first thing we're going to talk about is Marvel Studios actually going back to San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, they're going to have their panel back at, at, at Hall H. This was a Hollywood Reporter um, uh, article uh, that they posted uh, this, this past week saying that they're going to actually be at the panel. And all I can say, I'm very excited for this, uh, the opportunity to see Marvel back at San Diego Comic-Con. And also Com uh, Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con actually coming back to normalcy. So uh, w with that, uh, Carson, what do you think about uh, Marvel Studios is going to do? Uh, the ton of films they got. They got 10 years of, of movies ready to plan out and everything. Uh, is there anything you think they're going to show? What, what's your thoughts on San Diego Comic-Con being uh, come back to Marvel C with Marvel Studios to, to come back? Um, I think it's good for the, the movie industry, for the nerd culture, just to have these studios back in San Diego. Um, I'm sure San Diego, the city of San Diego, is happy that Marvel's yeah. coming in. Oh. Um, <laughs> that means money for them. It's, it's good for everybody, honestly. Like, um, It's good for the vendors that are there. More people will show up. Yeah. Uh, we need more exposure to our comic book industry, uh, whether it be our comic book stores. You know, They're hurting um, things like this generate revenue for them also. It generates interest. It makes people go to the stores. So right. uh, wherever you guys are, go to your local comic book stores. They do need your support. Yeah. Um, but as far as San Diego uh, or San Diego Comic-Con and Marvel coming back, it, it's it's good. It's good for everybody. It's good for us. It builds excitement for their brand, their movies. They haven't been there in a couple of years. Um I think they'll be doing probably a um, a teaser for Black Panther because that's the next upcoming movie. Right. Um, I think we'll get a sizzle a sizzle reel probably. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you said Ant Man comes out in February, um, so I'm sure we'll get a civil sizzle reel or we'll get some kind of information in regards to that. Maybe they'll bring out some stars. Hopefully, we get some actors. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we'll get some more information about Deadpool. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things they can. You know, we know that they're writing for Deadpool now. Maybe we get something. Maybe Ryan Reynolds shows up. Like, you know, some of these actors like to show up for stuff like this, just as a, you know, a bonus to the crowd there. Um, I know we were talking off camera. You, you said something about maybe they'll uh, show like a scene or something like that for the crowd there. Very possible. Right. I hope somebody doesn't ruin it and film it and put it online. Like, yeah. leave it, let it be special for you guys that are there. We'll all get to see it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy that they're coming. Hopefully that'll make other studios want to come. Like I think that they should come just because without the comic book industry, you don't have these movies. So you have to give back and go back to the roots of what started it all and give back to us, the comic book fans that enjoy these things. Um, so I think it's good for everybody. Yeah, 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 I agree with what you're saying. Uh, well, what, do you, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, you guys both know that San Diego Comic-Con is something I've wanted, you know, the three of us to go to for years now. Uh, we haven't been able to really, uh, you know, make it happen it yet. But the fact that Marvel's coming back, hopefully it's going to be a domino effect, you know? Right. That'll bring back WB, that'll bring back Sony. And then when we finally do get to go, it'll be the, the true... San Diego Comic Con experience. Uh, like Harrison said, we were talking off camera and you said, this is like the Mecca. Right. You know, this is like the gold standard of cons. And we've been to a couple cons now and I definitely want to go to the one that started it all. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to whatever Marvel does bring. Uh, hopefully it is some, you know, small video clips, maybe a teaser. 
Um, you know, hopefully we do get to see some of the actors. Uh, you know, maybe we get, uh, you know, some news out of it that, you know, hadn't previously been reported. News that, All that kind yeah. of stuff would be great. Right. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I, I, I like, like I said off camera, like this is the mecca of, of conventions for comics. Like this is, you know, the last couple of years, since San Diego Comic Con has been bad. Like they try to do the streaming online and it just, just didn't work. Um, right. there's, there's something about being at, at these conventions and, you know, I can only imagine how it's San Diego and actually being that panel, you know, just staying in line and the, like the whole, the whole thing about doing that is, is probably just, just memorable. So to actually see that they're trying to come back to normalcy and bring the best, one of the best studios in, in, in this genre, uh, to be the first one to announce that they're, they're coming, that that's good news. That means we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're actually coming back to normalcy and I hope uh, Warner Brothers and, and Sony comes too because they, they also got films. But I was looking at uh, what they got for the next couple of years. And, you know, the, the last film for this year after Thor, Love and Thunder is going to be Black Panther, uh, uh, What Kind of Forever. And then next year is going to be uh, Guardians, of Ga Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Ant Man, uh, Quantum Mania, the, uh, the Marvels, and a movie that has not been. Um, uh, announced yet, and that's probably going to be in the fall, and I think that's going to be Blade. So, you know, they got four films coming out next year, and the following year after that, 2024, they were kind of announced some of these, not fully confirmed yet, but we know about Fantastic Four, that's coming out 2024, possibly Deadpool, Captain America, and the, and the Thunderbolts. So even if we don't get like a lot of information about those films, maybe we'll find out who plays Reed Richards finally, you know, find out, you know, some kind of a pre-production art that they, that they can bring. There's so many things that they can do uh, just to hype up everything. Uh, we know Ke uh, Kevin Feige like to keep uh, a closed lip on stuff he's trying <laughs> to do, but he doesn't always bring the goodies, uh, you know, for the folks that come to uh, the Hall H. So, you know, that's what I'm excited about. And maybe this is the, the first of, of many other um, uh, studios coming to uh, Hall H and, and presenting their, you know, the projects for the next couple of years. So, uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is uh, we're going back to normalcy? Are you excited about Marvel being a, the first studio to actually come back uh, to San Diego Comic Con to present their their projects? Do you think Warner Brothers and Sony's going to follow suit? Let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know what your thoughts and. Um, you know, are you going to San Diego Comic Con? Let us know. Or have you gone before? Give us, you know, uh, your comments. Of, like, what do you think about the project? You know, uh, like, what do you think about the convention? And especially if you've been in Hall H, let, let us know like how, how those uh, events go. Because, you know, that's something that it's always hard to get into. I, I heard the stories, people go in there and they stay in line and they just can't get in right there. And they just can't get in. Like, they close the door on them. And it's like a couple more people ahead of them. They're like, man, I was... Almost got there. So, <laughs> but let us know what you think, and um, you know, let us know your thoughts. All right. So the, the next topic is a movie that we already talked about a couple of times already, and um, I'm super excited to uh, talk about this one. This one comes from um, Deadline, and it's Top Gun Maverick reaching one billion dollars, and I think this is fantastic for a movie that's not a comic book movie. To actually reach this, it, it shows that this movie had a, like a lot of legs, a lot of run, a lot of steam. Uh, everybody was captivated by the by the story, good word of mouth, and you know, it it's fi it finally broke a billion dollars. So, so Al, what do you think about this? Top I mean, Gun Maverick. Maybe you guys know, this. you know how I feel about this movie. You know, I rated it as my top movie of this year uh, to get out there and go see. Um, you know, I know that there's other great movies, but for me personally, from what I've seen. You know, I think this movie is awesome. And obviously, a lot of people thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when I see numbers like this, talking about a billion dollars, I feel like that means a lot of people are seeing it. And then the word of mouth, and then they're going back and seeing it again and right. bringing other people with them. So, I mean, I think it's great. Uh, like you said, it's a non-comic book film. Plus, it's a sequel to something that came out a long time ago. Yeah. And normally... We don't see that type of energy and that kind of excitement generated from that type of situation. Mm -hmm. But Top Gun has done it. Tom Cruise is better than ever in this. And, you know, it's just really a, a positive thing to see it pass a billion. Yeah. What do you think, Carson? Same here. I mean, it, uh, 
it just shows the power of Tom Cruise. Like it shows, you know, he's one of the last few marquee people that you could throw up and they still putting up numbers. The man is like 102 and he's still doing all these crazy stunts, flying these airplanes, putting his life on the line to get a billion dollars. I'm not mad at him. I'm not, you know, he's still out here. Like give Tom all his due. For a long time, I was kind of like, I don't know about Tom. I don't know about, but Tom Brady, you just throw him in the sand. I don't know these Tom people. Right. You just throw him (laughs) in this weird (laughs) bucket. (laughs) Damn it. Are you giving them the brain treatment? (laughs) Right. They're both damn it good. Like, like, why are you damn it good? Oh, man. You got to be this good? Like, but. Um, props to everybody, like you said, is to repeat viewing. Like people going back to see it more than once. Like the only way you get to these numbers, you get people that are going back and taking other people and word of mouth. And it, it's a juggernaut. It keeps going. Um, all power to them. I'm happy for them. Non comic book movie. It's good to see another yeah awesome. doing things when when everybody says, oh, the movie industry is dead. Not right. Not <laughs> proves that yeah. not. It also proves that the power of the theater. Right. You know, there was a debate for a long time about whether movies should just go to streaming right. or stream and release. Tom Cruise fought hard to like, no, you're not putting this in. You're not putting this on a platform. You're going to put this in the theaters where it needs to be shown. And we see why. We, we, now, now we see why he fought so hard to put this. I'm glad he stuck to his top guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't just Tom who felt that way, as we see every time we go to AMC, his ex feels that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> every time. <laughs> no, but like for me, like this movie has transcended a lot. And what I mean by that, we just, like, Al and I just went to a, um, open house for a local soccer team here in D.C., D.C. United. Mm-hmm. And the kids that, I'm going to say the kids, the, the, the young young gentlemen <laughs> who were working there had the stash. So I see the stash all over the place. So it's, it's funny to see how this thing just took off. Like, there's a huge thing on TikTok, I guess, with people just growing the stash and with, mm-hmm. with their family. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, with their family, uh, wearing the sunglasses mm-hmm. and just, you know, Go and see the movie together again and again and again, and it is so like aviators and stashes, aviators and stashes, aviators, yeah. aviators and stashes. And it, it it just shows that it just shows like when you have a good story, not a good story, you have a great story, very compelling, very interesting, great characters, and you add action to that. It's a it's a win win. It's a win win for everybody. If the movie does a billion dollars, that means everybody likes it. Everyone right? likes it. Yeah. So great tip. That you're going to get right here on GLT. Go invest in aviators. Go invest in brown <laughs> leather bomber jackets. I'm telling you right now, this is good money. In get a it. motorcycle. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Motorcycle. Yeah. Don't wear a helmet. Don't wear a helmet. Yeah, don't. Don't. Don't wear a helmet. Wear a helmet. I'm lying. Don't wear a helmet. We're going to invest in this. I have a bike. I wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come at me saying I told little kids not to <laughs> wear a helmet. I mean, you are not going to turn me into Darth Vader. I'm not. <laughs> but what do you guys think? Uh, uh, did you go see Top Gun? If, if so, how many times did you see it? Are, are you shocked that you know they they actually got to the point where they made a billion dollars? Um, do you think this might push Paramount to go make a third film? I, I think if you make a billion dollars in this short amount of time. I might say a third film likely will likely will come. But you let, mean they'll get the green light? I think they will get the okay. green light. <laughs> but let us know in the comments and, and I'll let us know your thoughts. Okay, so our, our third topic today uh, comes from us from Variety and some, some sad news uh, for for a certain film. Lightyear had a very disappointing uh, weekend so far at, at seventeen point seven million dollars. Total eighty-eight million domestically, sixty-five uh, percent uh, decline from the previous weekend, and um, it's kind of hard. We've both seen this movie. I've seen it twice now. He's uh, Alan saw it uh, today. Carson, have you seen Buzz Light? 
I mean, have you seen like? I have. I haven't. Um, I might try and go this week. My daughter hasn't even said anything about it, so. Well, maybe that's an issue. So <laughs> maybe that's an issue. Uh, <laughs> but um, like the reasonings, like I, I, I want to like to know what you guys think that is the issue. Like we heard about this, you know. It's not well. There's a lot of theories that that's going out there right now. So one is basically this movie's not really a kids movie. Um, it's not too kiddish. It's like more not safe for all adults, but I guess more for mature children. Yeah. Two, they really didn't explain what this movie really is about. It doesn't have like that true to, to, um, Toy Story lore that the other films have. Um, and three, and you know, it's just based off a of conversation. And my views are not a part of this, but it's about the scene with um, um, uh, Hawthorne, Hawthorne and her wife, uh, this, this scene's in the movie. So uh, some parents and you know, religion, like religious uh, groups, they didn't like that. But, you know, it's part of the conversation as, as an issue. This movie was banned in the Middle East for the scenes. Uh, when I first uh, saw it, I was like, I wonder how long this is going to be. And it, I want to say it was, like, long, but it was a good about three, four, maybe five minutes of it. And it was, basically it was, uh, like, cuts of it. It wasn't, like, a whole scene drawn out or you didn't hear any talking. Up, like, they basically just showed it. So I can understand why Middle East countries said, no, we're not going to play this movie here. But here in Iran, the uh, rest of the globe, it's kind of interesting to see. So, um, Carson, what do you think that what was it, like some of the issues you think? Like, have you seen anything that you, that you thought, raise your eyebrows, why this movie's not performing well? Because, we, I mean, we all thought this movie was going to do well because it's coming from the Toy Story lore. And it's about a character that everyone's beloved, but uh, you know, even with the whole thing with Chris Evans and people thinking that Disney fired Tim Allen, even though he's in another Disney movie coming up pretty soon. So, um, <laughs> uh, like, it, it was just weird, like, th just to hear all the, I guess, negative stuff that people had towards Phil. Um, what do you think? <clears throat> <sighs> so, Toy Story. The what is it? A trilogy? There's three of them, right? No, it's four. 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 Oh, it's four. No, it's four. Right. So the four movies, <laughs> it's one of the best, whether it be animated or live action stories from beginning to end. Right. Arguably. <sighs> now you're taking this character and you're trying to GI Joe him, and trying to change the animation style. I just think it doesn't have that same heart. In... Like, what do you mean, G.I. Joe? Like, explain like, People don't understand. <laughs> uh, instead of it being this family-oriented movie that has all this heart and love and, you know, drama to it, you're trying to take this character, change the animation a little bit, grow it up, and try to turn it into this, like this action kind of film. I just don't think it's connecting with the same audience that loved the original version. Right. They probably thought that people that grew up with it would like this because it's a, I don't know, I don't know how you want to describe it, like a more adult version of Toy Story, but I just think it doesn't resonate with the people that loved those characters. They don't want to see a different variation of buzz lightyear they want to see buzz lightyear like i don't i just think that there's a disconnect in what they thought people wanted and what they actually wanted um i've heard all the stuff i haven't seen the movie but i heard all the stuff online and read some of the stuff online about the scenes in the movie I, honestly i think people checked out before that stuff even started coming out like i don't think there was a big groundswell about this movie before all that stuff started coming out. So I think yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you because I actually think. went, I actually went to the early uh, screening for this. It was like yeah. the experience, and that theater was not packed, and that was way before Word of Mouth came out about anything right. else. So right, 
I think you're right. I, I think you're right about that. Uh, you, you have anything else that you want to add to that? <clears throat> no, I, I think that's really it, though. I don't. I, I know everybody wants a conspiracy theory or some big reason as to why it didn't perform. Some movies just don't perform or they don't connect with the audience. And I think in this case, that's more it than anything else. I mean, yes, you would have religious groups not stealing some content that's in the movie, but I, just, I, I personally just don't think that that is the reason why the movie isn't performing. It could have some some to do with it, yes, but I just don't think that's the main reason as to why it's not performing. Okay. What do you think, Al? Um, well, unfortunately, it's not doing well. But I don't think it's because of a design flaw or because it's a bad movie. Uh, because I think it was very well put together. I think it's a great movie. Um, the issues that, you know, are probably arising uh, performance-wise and metrics-wise have to do with people's perception. Um, no, it's not a part five to Toy Story. And it wasn't advertised as that. Um, Right. (laughs) You know, you you look at things from the standpoint of your own experience. And we've all grew up with our favorite movies. And we bought toys or lunch boxes or shirts or something with our favorite characters from those movies. But, you know, when you grow up, your kids or their kids might not know what that stuff is or who that person is or where it came from. Right. So. Mm Let's say, you know, my grandkids put in Avengers for the first time and they've come over to our homes and have seen all of our stuff and never knew what it was or where it came from and then watched the movie for the first time and goes, oh, that's why you guys are so excited about it. And I like the idea behind the movie. Like, you're giving us the reason why he loved Bugs. It was a great, great energy. Um, you know, it was something for everybody in the movie. And a lot of heart, a lot more emotion than I expected from this. Um, but I understand, like, what you were saying. You know, uh, some people are very against uh, certain images being in movies. Um, even if it's not, uh, you know, very in your face and, like, you know, it was very subtle. Yeah, it was, very it, was subtle. it was subtle. That was bad. You know, it's just saying, you know, this is my family. This is where I come from. You know, it's it's nothing, nothing that was like just thrown down your throat. You know, right, it, right. It, it was fine. But for some people, even that's too much. And unfortunately, you know, that can affect the numbers. Not coming out in certain countries can affect the numbers. And then, like you know, Carson said this. There was four movies before this. We don't know if each sequel, you know, continue to do the kind of numbers that the original one did. Sometimes people lose interest when you get this far into it. So it, it could be a factor of a bunch of things. But I feel like this would be one of those movies that people will come back to later and say, oh, wow, did you realize this was a really good movie? What do you think? So that's what I was going to ask you guys. So do you guys think this movie has potential to possibly become like one of those cult movies that catch on later, maybe hit streaming or something and people start liking it yep. differently? Like they just didn't go to the theater and see it and then finally catch on to it and be like, oh, that was a good flick. It happens a lot. I don't know. I'm not sure. All because people are stubborn. So um, I think people, I put it this way. The first 20 seconds, they tell you what this film is about. And I think people can't get over the, the whole Tim Allen thing. But I want to ask you guys this. How many times do you go see a movie in the theaters? They have a certain person playing the voice. They make a toy for that character. The voice is totally different. So Disney was basically saying... This is one of these situations where you go watch a, a, a movie, a, a animation movie at the theaters. There's certain actors playing this voice. In your mind, this is the voice. When you go to Toys R Us, you buy the toy, it's a different voice. How, how many times have that 
does that, does that really bother you? Or are you just happy you got the toy of that character? And for me, I didn't really care about the voice. I was like, this is, you know, they made a Lionel talking toy and his, his voice was different in the movie, the cartoon or something like that. And I get the toy, the toy, different voice. I, I still got my Lionel toy. That, like, to me, that's, that's more important. But I see a lot of people like not looking at that. And it could have been Disney too, not really explained that well as well. I mean, um, as well. So that it's all it comes to communication. Like you know, you you, you tell fan base is not your typical Toy Story. This is actually the the movie that Andy watched, and this is why he bought, uh, why he made his parents buy him a, a Buzz Lightyear uh, toy. And then I, I think that message would have been like, oh, okay, let me see why Andy loved Buzz Lightyear on Lightyear. But I, I think they didn't do the best job communicating that, that message. Um, and, like, and like you said, Kirk, it does not look like a Toy Story animation film at all. Like, when, when you're watching this thing, like, I'm completely, like, in, like impressed what um, Pixar uh, is doing over there. Because, I mean, some of the shots they had, like, the close-ups, like, the buttons, on, like, on the ship and stuff like that, it looked like a real button. It looked real life. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, kudos for the, you know, I, I feel bad for the animators for this film. Because you can tell they put a lot of work into the detail of, of this film. And it, they're not... They're, they're not getting, uh, you know, there's no justice due for them, you know, for all that work that they did. It's very astonishing work that, that I've seen. And as someone who went to um, um, high school that was for, for art and drawing cartoonists and stuff like that, uh, and, um, back home in Buffalo, and actually seeing, like, this animation get better throughout the years from Pixar, and to the point to where this movie, sometimes the shots look real. Yeah, it looked real life. I'm like that. That's how good yeah. the animation is in this film. So it's kind of, it's it's heartbreaking uh, that you know the film didn't uh, do better at the box office. Mm -hmm. I do understand where some people are coming from, but I I, I was tell like this is what I tell people: come with an open mind. You know, come with an open mind. Don't come with ex expectations. Enjoy the film what it is, and you know you never know. You, you might you might enjoy the film. And I, I also think, like, you, you got to consider who the fan base is that's going to see this movie versus who the fan base is that might be going to see a different animated film. Um, like, if do you think if that same, you know, couple minutes that was in the movie was in Spider-Verse, that Spider-Verse would have flopped? I don't think so. I think the, the, the energy and the fan base for... Spider Verse would have carried it to strong numbers regardless. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's because of the fan base of the Toy Story movies not fully carrying over to this film. I think that's where you see the drop off. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a shame. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I do believe that once people decide to give this a chance, whether it's when it comes to streaming or you know at some later point. I think they'll realize, oh wow, you know, I made a mistake. This was a great film. Yeah, yeah like, like I think it's a good film. I, I think it's something that it, definitely for everyone to watch. And, and I said before in previous videos, it all depends. I, I'm not a type of person telling you to change who you are. Yeah. If you believe a certain thing, believe that. I'm not trying to change you. You know, be yourself, be happy. Uh -huh. uh, but I also feel like you know, have open minded when it comes to certain things. Like we're watching a great TV show right now with. Uh, Miss Marvel, uh, you know, having a Middle Eastern uh, character, something that we really haven't gotten a lot in the United States. And you see he's got recently uh, certified uh, uh, fresh. fresh on, on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Just give, you know, like, and I'm sure people might think of, you know, someone like me, Black or Indian or, you know, Hispanic or whatever. You have your, you know, I don't want to say racist, but you you have your certain thoughts of people like that. But see a film like a show like Miss Marvel, and see how they're they're doing, showing how beautiful the culture is. Mm -hmm. You may have never have thought of it like that before until you saw this uh, this show. So, like I always, like I said before, I'm not here to change no, no one's opinion or what they believe in. But I also feel like be open minded, and give, give give stuff a chance, and you never know. If you come out, you still hate it. You hate it. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you come out, you know, saying, "Wow, this is totally different than what I expected." Uh, you know, do that too. But ninety six percent. Oh yeah, from right. yeah. That's, that's the highest rating of any Marvel Disney Plus show. Yeah. 
And why do you think it is? It's because same thing as Top Gun. Ms. Marvel, they're leaning into what they are. They're not right. running away from it. Don't run. If you want to make a, like, everybody should take heed, take notice of what's going on. You lean into who you are. Don't run away from it. Yeah. If it fails, it fails. And, and I think that's some of the problem in Hollywood right now. Sometimes we take the safe yeah. choice yeah. rather than trying to push it forward. People can say whatever they want about George Lucas and Star Wars, but he did try to push the envelope every time. His execution might not have been the greatest, but he always tried to push forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's some of the problem that we're having. Ms. Marvel leans into what it is. Like, we're going to tell a story yeah. about this Pakistani girl. We're going to show you this Pakistani family. And we're going to show you how they live right. and how they move and, and their religion. And we're not going to run away from religion. Let's stay on, let's stay on, but on, on, on light here. Though. We can talk about Ms. Marvel a little bit. But, <laughs> but, um, the things that I saw on Twitter today kind of takes kind of take me off a little bit. It, 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 like this is the, the non open minded stuff that I don't like. Because once this, this article dropped from uh, Variety, I started seeing like you know, posts under it saying, you know, you woke, you broke, and I'm like, come on now, like let's be let's be more sure about this, okay? We all live in, in in an open world now. It's a global world. We all live in together. Even if you don't like. Or whatever you know, like interracial marriage or gay marriage or, or whatever. There's no reason to, to show the hate. If you don't like something, just don't like it. Don't bring your hate to the situation where it 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 it, it brings a bad taste to to everything. Yes, if the movie's failing right now, but you don't need to say if it's woke, is woke, is broke, and because Disney would never go broke. Okay, so get that out of your mind now. And if they keep want to keep having movies and TV shows representation like this, the more it matter. Uh, the like, more the better, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, you gotta understand, like, we're older guys, so we didn't get a lot of representation growing up. So now, living in a neighborhood of, like, where we, where we came from, where it's very diverse, you have a ton of different types of people in, in our community, and now we finally see everybody being represented. We absolutely, absolutely love this, because this is what, what we grew up with. And everybody has grown up like that, and we understand that. However, bring that bring a certain type of hate into you know, towards the film for five minutes, if that, for a film, that's that's unfair. I mean, if you didn't like the, the movie because it wasn't good, I'm cool with that. But this don't bring like the immature hate, saying that you know if it's if it's woke, it's broke. Like for me, that's that's unnecessary. I'm sorry, Carson. Sorry. <laughs> Only that cut you off is I knew we were going to talk about this for a long, for a long time. And, and, you know, when something's good, you, you want to talk about it. So, <laughs> but um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, did you guys see Buzz Lightyear? Uh, what do you think about the film? Uh, do you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Uh, what reasons do you think the movie's failing right now in the box office? Is, it, is there too much competition? We, like, we didn't think about that either. You got Top Gun in there. You got Elvis, Elvis that just came out this past weekend. There's a lot of competition right now. So, was was that even a factor as well? You still got Jurassic Park, and people like dinosaurs. Doesn't matter if the movie sucks or not. So, like that's another thing too. Was it was this a bad timing to put this movie out? Should they brought it out earlier? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, what do you think about that? Jurassic Park. Yeah, I think Jurassic Park is cutting it. Cutting into it. What do you think, Carson? You think all this competition hurt? Hmm. Probably generally counter programming works in this sort of situation. Usually it does, right? But like you guys said, I think people are often to take their kids to see dinosaurs mm -hmm. and not taking them to go see this Pixar movie. Yeah. And they probably weren't anticipating Top Gun having the legs that it has for right. the last few weeks. Right. Had they right. thought that, they probably would have moved it. Yeah, we got two monsters with with with, with, two, with, two with <laughs> right? And then, but you have two stories of people flying too, like it's right two pilots. So like you're not, it's counter programming, but it's not counter programming. Yeah, at yeah. The same time. I mean, so there could be some way, of that too. I hadn't even thought about that really until you the way you put it. it. I mean, yeah, that's something I would think about. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, sense. that makes a lot of sense. I, 
I could see there being a problem. Like nobody thought Top Gun would have this longevity. No, like, you thought maybe no. week two. What are we going into? Oh, just a month now, almost. This movie, almost a month. Yeah, 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 just a month. A month this week. You don't crazy. Do you right. think Top Gun is special in this way, or do you foresee like maybe Avatar or any of the other movies trying to do the same thing? Avatar is interesting because I don't know what people really think of it. It's been like yeah. over ten years. Um, well, I don't hear a lot of people. A long time, so. I know, but people talk about Top Gun. I and I really heard a lot of people talk about Avatar. Some people <laughs> like it. Some it, like it, that one's tough. I really don't know. Yeah, I really don't. Know. But yeah, I want to. I, I want to count them out. I mean, think about the money it. Avatar did the first time it came out. I mean, right, because it's so new. Okay. Right, but but technology yes, has yes. caught up, though. That's the thing. <laughs> yes. so technology has caught it up. Was something, it was something new. <laughs> But nobody quotes Avatar. Right. There's no music from Avatar no. that anybody thinks about. They're, like, Top Gun has quotes. Top Gun 1, people still quote that movie. The, the music in that movie still resonates with people. Avatar, I'm not sure. I, we'll find out. It's weird to me. Like, I don't know because it did so much money that people might want to go see it. Um, in, you go to it's going to make money, but I, I don't know. I, I just don't, don't know. I can't put my pulse on like what people are feeling about that movie. Because well, I mean, Tom Cruise isn't in it, so there's that's the true. Or The Rock. So there's no Dwayne Johnson, there's no Tom Cruise, there's no Tom Brady. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Living on this time. Well, guys, let us know what you think. Uh, why Buzz uh, Lightyear or Lightyear? I'm sorry, I don't want to call by his full name. His whole government, but um, let us know what, what, why you think Lightyear at, has failed in the box office. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And uh, that's it for, for this this week for Greek's show. Uh, like I said, it wasn't, wasn't a lot of news uh, for this past week that we felt that, that was worth talking to. Like talking about, I mean, we did see some news about um, Wonder Man. Uh, it's gonna be a TV show, right? Yeah. It's gonna be a TV show. Yeah. Um, like a lot of small news, but nothing like too like eye popping to where we thought that we can't discuss about it. But um, thank you for watching uh, our show today. Uh, thank you, Carson, for uh, joining us, even though you're not here. Uh, all the way back home. All the way back home, Buffalo. Uh, and and you know, thank you to Adam. Uh, and uh, next time we see you, hopefully soon. Talk to you guys later. <laughs>